All right, 37 high school students from a track, some track, team, track teams in the state participated in a training program to improve running times. Before the training, the mean running time for the students to run a mile was 402 seconds with standard deviation 40 seconds. And after completing the program, the mean running time for the students to run a mile was 368 seconds with standard deviation 30 seconds. Let X represent the running time of a randomly selected student before training, and let Y represent the running time of the same student after training. Same student. Which the following is true about the distribution of X minus Y. Okay, so let's first let's write some statistics out. The mean of X, and before two, standard deviation of X, which we were told is 40, and the mean of Y, of which the mean of Y is 368, and the standard deviation of Y is 30. And we, we were studying the distribution of X minus Y. So the mean of X minus Y would be equal to the mean of X minus the mean of Y or 4, 2 minus 368, which would be 34. Now, if, he, if, if X and Y weren't independent, the standard deviation or the variance of X minus Y would be equal to, oops, not, not square. Actually, I don't need to waste your time with this. Just take you some time. Variance or standard deviation of a difference can't be determined when you have um, variables that could be related, meaning or associated. Because um, in this case, since each um, individual was compared to their own time, the amount of improvements we can, we can argue that is based on, you know, the individual, like probably um, those that were already in, or those that were in really good shape to begin with probably didn't improve as much versus those who maybe never ran. So um, the mean would work, but the standard deviation or the variance can't be calculated because um, they, X and Y are not independent. So, would work so variables x and y are not independent and the mean is okay 34 but a standard deviation cannot be given with the information yeah so it would be b all right 38 a polling organization organized surveyed 2002 randomly selected adults who are not scientists and 2,748 randomly selected adults who are scientists. Each adult was asked the question, do you think that genetically modified foods are safe to eat? Of those who are not scientists, 37% said yes. And those who are scientists, 88% responded yes. Which of the following is a standard error used to construct a composite rule for the difference between portions of all adults who are not scientists and all adults who are scientists? Okay, so we're looking for the difference in proportions. So let's just say P, you know, P1 minus P2 hats. Looking at that. So we just have to make sure we look at the correct um, equation in our, in our formula packet. And we look at, you know, dealing with proportions. And what do you know? We got standard errors all in this column. And we got two population differences of sample proportions here. And you know, these are basically the same except we're talking about sample in this case. So we just are just gonna use one of these formulas, this guy right here. So square roots of, let's say one group is oh, N1, let's make N1 2002. And N2, 3,748. 
plug that in. 2002 plus over 3,748. And from the, 2000, from the 2002 group, or the group of the 2002 individuals, not scientists, 37% of them said yes. So, the, so for this group, you would have the P1 hat, so this guy, 0.37. And then one minus p hat will just be 0 0.73. Another group, 88% their p hats, 0 0.88. And one minus p hat, one minus 0 0.88, so 0 0.12. So again, just this one, it's really, this is really simple. So we just look to see which one matches up. And it's the first one. It'll be A. Don't overthink this one. Literally, that's all there is to it. Oh, and I put 0.63. Whoa. I know. 0.63. Luckily, there wasn't a 0.73. So I want to be caught off with that one. All right, 39. A polling agency conducted a survey about social media in which each random in which each person in random samples of 1,000 men and 1,000 women was asked what factor he or she considers to be the most important in deciding whether to connect on social media with another person. Responses are shown with you. All of these, either all of our um, observed counts, they're talking about uh, uh, chi square statistics. So these are our observed counts. And we want to look what is the contribution to the chi square statistic for men who selected business networking as the most important factor. So we were, we were studying this group and business networking. And as you remember, the chi square statistic is equal to the sum of, of uh, remember, that, let's, let me just back and let's go to the formula sheet. So I'm sure you. It's given to you, given, it's given to you again. Don't worry about having to memorize it and forgetting. Chi square statistics, the sum of the observed minus expected squared differences over the expected values. Observed minus expected squared over the expected. So we could brute force this and figure out each one. But luckily in your calculator, you have a function where you can run this and you want to go to the chi-square test, but first you're going to go to a matrix. You're going to enter these values in a matrix. So it's a matrix. And this calculator is over here. And you want to make a matrix with two rows and two columns. So I already did this one, but if it's not there, just, just change it to two by five. And just enter these values in the matrix like that. These are your observed values. Enter them just exactly like you see. Once you do that, go to your um, stats and tests and run a chi-square test. There we go. The observed values are what we enter and what we entered in matrix A. Expected to be any other matrix, I just put B because it's not simplest. Calculate. Now this, is, this would be um, the p-value and the chi-square statistic um, from uh, inference test. But let's look at what the expected counts are. So let's go back to matrix. And let's, let's look at matrix B. And C in matrix B, I have the observed, uh, the expected counts. I'm going to look for what the expected counts were in this column. And you can see it's going to be 30. The expected was 30. 
So I just want to calculate this value for for the for this observed and expected counts. So I'm going to do forty five minus thirty squared over thirty. 15 squared over 30, 225 over 30, you get 7.5. Some answers you can see. All right, final one. Happy place, here we go. Oh, this one's easy, or not. Well, yeah, it's easy. I'm going to say it's easy. It's a nice way to end. You can end this as confidently. All right, so here we got a national survey asked 1,501 randomly selected employee adults, employed adults, how many hours they worked per week. Based on the collected data, a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of hours worked per week for all employed adults was given as 41.18 to 42.63. Which the following statement is the correct interpretation interpretation of the interval. Okay, so let's go through that. A, 95% of all employed adults work between 40, no, this, I mean, hopefully you don't mix that one up. Um, the 95% confident, 95% refers to the strength of the interval, not the actual percent of the answer, dealing with the answer. The answer could be the 17%. It has nothing to do with that. B, the probability is point not, no, no, I already know right away. It's not a probability. Because it's, again, it's a sub strength. Um, um, I mean, and that, well, let me actually touch more on this. Especially when you're saying, when you're talking about the probability of sample, um, like you don't, you don't, you're not going to, you already know what the sample produced. You're not going to be guessing about the sample. You're going to be make, using the sample to make estimates about the population. So it's never going to be like, oh, we're, we're pretty sure that this interval contains the sample. So it's like, be careful of those ones. Those are not everything correct. C, of all samples of size 1501 taken from the population, 95% of the samples will have a mean between 41.18% and or 41.18 hours and 42.63 hours okay so this is kind of that but in this is actually referring to not the confidence interval but the confidence level let me actually mention that this is this is probably the most confusing one confidence level if we said confidence level that's what this means but that's that's a good one. That's a good way to that's that's a good way to test you. D, we're ninety five percent um, confident that the mean number of hours worked per week for all employed adults. See again in the sample, we don't we know what the sample is. You know that you know we we're hundred percent certain of what the sample proportion is because that's how we got our data. That's or that's how we create our confidence interval. So not D, and by process of elimination it's going to be E. But let's just read it through. We are ninety five percent confident. And the mean number of hours worked per week for all employed adults is between 41.18 hours and 42.63 hours. That sounds good, and it is good. All right. There we go. Multiple choice section done. Congrats. Good luck. I hope that helps. And take a break, and then move on to free response. See you later.